you, uh, IFA Galaxy, for inviting me as one of the speakers for this event. Right? I would like to thank Mr. Babu, uh, Mr. Srinivasan, and Mr. Mohsin for the opportunity. So not many people would be knowing, but one thing I have over all the speakers till now is I belong to your community, so I'll be able to relate to you much more than the AMC guys, right? So I keep it simple. So whatever I would be sharing for the next 20 minutes would be my experience in the last five years as an MFD, right? So that is what I'm going to share with you guys. So how many of you have come across this book called Atomic Habits? Great. So if someone has not gone through this book, so I would request them to just try to collect this book and try to spend some time on this. So in this, the author, Mr. James Clear, he clearly mentions a simple concept. What is that? Small, tiny changes you keep doing over a period of time. It can have a significant impact over a longer period, right? So today, my presentation is going to be on this concept, okay? Where one person changes regularly, how much it can impact, it can have over a longer period. So we all come from finance profession, so we like numbers more. So this is a simple concept. If there is a 1% improvement every day, over a period of 365 days, you can grow by 37x, okay, 37 times. Similarly, if you start dropping your bad habits by 1% every day, over a period of one year, you can totally knock off your bad habits. Now, when it comes to our industry, I have seen a lot of MFDs who tell, you know, I, I, I have reservation to use technology. So I, I would prefer to go physical mode rather than digital mode. So if you have these kind of reservations, slowly start using technology, at least for few transactions. Over a period of time, this mind block will be removed. So this is what I want to drive. There are, I have come across a lot of MFDs who doesn't want to take clients from US or Canada because of the complications it is involved, right? So if you start handling one client, then that can be a big market. So there are a lot of mind block which we as an MFD have and we close that market for ourselves. So when you want to think of growth, you should not close any of your you know, business opportunities. That's what I want to drive. Next is 1 to the power of 365 is equal to 1. That means assume you don't want to change, right? You want to stay as it is. Then after one year, you will remain at the same place where you were there one year before. Okay? So if you don't improve, you will get stagnated. So I came across this nice quote by Leonard Sweet. So what he tells, stagnation is death. If you don't change, you die. It's as simple. Right? So please understand that today morning we had a lot of speakers, you know, including Mr. Nilesh Bhai. What they told, change is the only permanent thing. Right? So you need to adapt to change. So if you see the last decade, how the mutual fund industry has moved, right? 2013, the industry size was 8.26 trillion, which is 8.26 lakh crores. Right? In 2018, it is 22.41 lakh crores. And today we are somewhere close to 40 lakhs crores, right? So how much the industry has moved in the last decade? In the last decade, it has grown up 5x, okay? How many of you have been in the industry for the last 10 years and at least grown 5x? Right? So you just introspect. In the last five years, it has grown 2x. That is from 20 trillion, it has become 40 trillion, right? So if you have grown 2x in the last five years, that means great. If you have not grown at least in pace with the industry. That means you are not doing something right. So you need to introspect and see what you are not doing right where the industry is growing at this pace, right? So we keep telling client is not investing, but the money is coming to mutual fund industry, right? So that is a simple logic. So if you are not growing with industry, introspect yourself what you are doing wrong and try to change and try to improve. 
So this is just what I mentioned. Last five years, industry has grown 2x. And last 10 years, industry has grown 5x. Right? So if you have missed this opportunity in the last five years or 10 years, let's see way forward. So today, we had a lot of questions, you know, when 100 lakh crore would be reached, which year it will be reached. It's a simple math. So if the industry is growing at 2x in the next 10 years, we are going to be 80 trillion. If it is going to be 3x, it will be 120 trillion. If we are going to grow at 4x, it can go to 160 trillion. That means 160 lakh crores. Whether you are going to grow at this pace or not, industry is going to grow. Only you have to take a call how much you should participate in this growth, right? So how many of you agree that at least 3x growth would be there in the next 10 years, like 120 lakh crore? Great. Majority of you assume, uh, you know, are in, we are in sync, you know, industry can easily grow to 120 lakh crores. But are we prepared to be part of this growth? Otherwise, you are just spectator. So as an individual, what is your growth vision? So today you might be here at 5 crore, 10 crore, 50 crores, 100 crores, whatever your current AUM is. So put down a number where you want to see yourself in the year 2033. Okay? If you are putting a number which is 0 to 2x growth, then you are not really growing, you are shrinking. Okay? You are growing less than the industry. 2 to 4x is what industry is expected to grow. I will let you know the logic of that also going forward. Right? So your target should be at least grow more than 4x. That means today if you are 10 crore in next 10 years, if you are not 50 crore, you have not done justice to yourself. It's not a big number. Right? So just think currently where your AUM is and what is the kind of growth you want to see in the next 10 years and what it takes to grow to that extent is what you need to work for the next 10 years. So my MFD journey, so I am, for few people, they know me. For many people, I don't think, you know, they, they know me. So I'm not very active in the MFD community. But just I thought I'll give a few background about myself. So I'm a second generation MFD. My father was also an MFD. And now our entire whole family is into MFD. My brother, sister-in-law, me and my wife also joined. Okay. And... Uh, Basically, I am an MBA finance, then CFA charter from US, and then certified FRM. And then started active in the year 2018. It's been fifth year for me. So I have a lot of mentors. So one good thing, if you want to grow, you should have mentors. OK, I have a lot of mentors from the MFD community. Uh, to take few names, uh, Jigar Parekh is there, Mr. Kanak Jain, Sunil Javeri, Okay, Dr. Selso, if many of you know, right? And I have in Bangalore, there is one person by name, Mr. Stanley. Okay, if you are from South, you know, so that four or five mentors are there. So each one have contributed to me directly or indirectly in my growth, right? So if you want to grow, one, success, one simple idea is have a right mentor. Because if you have a right mentor, he will guide you. You can take his opinions, you can take his perspective, and you keep growing. So that is one takeaway from this you know, presentation. Try to find good mentor. So from the AMC community, I keep following Mr. Shankar Narayan, Mr. Nilesh Bhai. So I keep, you know, every month their monthly outlook and all, I generally don't miss. Then my clientele includes mainly HNI and NRI, and awards. Uh, I have got Volatility Coach Award in the year 21, MFRT Samman Award in the year 2022, and I have authored two books which are available in Amazon. The last point I wanted to tell you is I am very happy and I am blessed to be an MFD. How many of you believe in this room you are blessed to be an MFD? If you don't believe this, you will never grow. For the simple reason, in no profession in the world pays you money to help other people succeed in their finance, financial world, right? If, for example, what you are doing, you are forcing someone to do an SAP, right? If he doesn't do what, worse can happen. He might not achieve his goal. Otherwise, he will achieve his goal by taking a loan where he is going through a financial pain. Or if he defaults on the loan, he is going into a financial distress. So only three things can happen if one is not saving. One is either financial distress 
or financial pain or third thing is they will just give up their financial dreams or goals which they wanted to achieve. So in your, pro in your profession, you are helping them to get, reach their financial success and avoiding all these three errors which can happen. That means you are avoiding client going through a financial pain or a financial distress and you are helping him to realize his financial goals, right? So first have this mindset that you are in a very noble profession. If you have that mindset, the whole conversation which you do with your client will change, okay? If you are thinking, what is the income I am going to get from this business, you will never grow. So whenever you go to the client, you are going to help your client achieve something good in his life. Automatically, income will come to you. So change that perspective that can have a huge impact, okay? So my AUM journey, I started in the year 2018, 2 crores, 2021, 100 crores, another one or two days, I will achieve 200 crores, right? In the last 18 months, what is the market return in the last 18 months? Zero percent. But my AUM has moved from 100 to 200 crores in the last 18 months, right? So if an investor is investing for 10 years, 15 years, why you should be considered about market today, right? At the time of investment. So if you can put a right perspective to the client, he doesn't bother to invest at up market or a down market. And the important thing I wanted to tell is my SAP book is 2.4 crores, okay, currently. Which is, if you see as a percentage of my AUM, on 200 crores, it is 1.2 percentage. So this number I want you guys to keep in mind and also try to calculate your SAP book as a percentage of AUM because that is one of the big trigger for growth. So now coming to 1% rule to grow AUM. So always think monthly 1% improvement, right? That's what I want to drive. So there are four parameters which will help you to grow. So what are these four parameters? One is mark to market. Second thing is your SAP book. Third thing is lump sum from existing clients. And fourth is new flows from new clients. Okay, these are the four parameters. If you focus on all the four parameters properly, you can easily grow at 3 to 4% every month. That means every two years you can double your AU. Okay, so what the logic I'll tell you. Mark to market, we all believe what is the long term return in a bond, 4 to 8%. Hybrid funds, it is 8 to 12%. Equity can give you 12 to 16%. There can be one year where you get 30%. There can be one year where you have negative return. But as a long term investment return, this is acceptable return, which I have mentioned on top of it. Right? So when you are discussing with your client, you need to build a portfolio which is suitable for him. If you build a suitable portfolio, he's going to stick with you for a longer period, right? So your role is to do an asset allocation and your role in mark to market to get the best return is what? Do an appropriate fund selection. How do you do fund selection? Today you have a lot of research platforms which are available today, right? So you should be equipped yourself. You should enhance your product knowledge. You should enhance your market knowledge. And you should enhance how you are going to position your, this, a particular product to your client, right? Or asset allocation. So spend every month at least self-improvement on yourself, at least 1% every month. How you can do that? Our AMCs are helping us so much. You have market outlooks, you have product uh, knowledge presentations. Just be part of it and try to improve yourself on the financial domain, right? Someone is coming to you because you are expert in that. So then you should have a strong holding on what you are preaching to your clients, right? So mark to market, depending on your clientele portfolio, it itself will grow you at least 6 to 12% every year, right? Acceptable, 12% growth you can easily see if you have an equity portfolio over longer period without you doing anything, right? If you have an even bond portfolio, 6% growth you will see every year. So monthly 0.5 to 1% growth will happen depending on the asset allocations you have it. So next is, we all show this chart to our clients, right? To build one crore, you need to invest how much? 10,000 rupees for 20 years or 20,000 rupees for 15 years. How many of you show these charts to the 
clients. We are all sure, right? But just think from the flip side. If the client invests 10,000 rupees for 20 years, he will achieve 1 crore, but it will be your AUM is also 1 crore. We only tell to the client, but that is adding to my AUM 1 crore. Tell me now, it is very difficult to get 100 people investing 10,000 for 20 years. Your AUM is 100 crores. Making 100 crore, is it difficult? Just 100 people you cannot identify and get them 10,000 rupees SAP for 20 years. Right? Logic is very simple. As Mr. JP mentioned in the uh, panel discussion, you wanted to retire with 50 lakhs. Today you know how much minimum in a metro cities like Chennai, they want monthly 1 lakh rupees. They should have two and a half crore retirement portfolio. You just manage 100 people's retirement, you have 250 crores in your pocket. Right? So it's very simple to build 100 or 200 crores. It's not a big deal. So only thing, why they are not investing for 20 years? That's the question you should ask yourself. So the second trigger, as I told you, SAP as a percentage of AU. So if you have at least, you know, what industry preaches is around 1%. As a base level, you should try to have it. Monthly SAP. So if you have 10 crore is your AUM, at least have 10 lakh as the SAP pool, which will add at least 1 crore every year, approximately. So if you don't have 1%, then you need to work on it. SAP is a very good tool. Why? Because it keeps you in constant touch with the client, right? So market is high or low, you can sell SAP. Lump sum, you should be very careful which market you are entering. But SAP can be an all market product or all season product. And SAP is suitable for all kinds of investment. See, if you are dealing with salaried people, it's very easy. What is their saving? Put it into SAP. If you are dealing with business people also, they will have a minimum cash flow which comes in the worst business cycle. So at least identify that and give them a SAP. So, I try to position at least one SAP to my client, even if the amount is small, he will be in touch with you. Otherwise, someone will watch one crore, two years, no contact, then he will take the money out and get out. Getting? So, try to position SAP for all your clients and always link SAP to goals. So, in the previous slide, I told you 20 years, just put 10,000, one crore. But why people don't invest for 20 years? Because you have not linked your goals for them as a retirement goal. If that was linked, then you will not remove or stop after two years or after three years, right? So always try to link all your SAPs to certain goals so that people will invest or clients will invest for that period. You get long-term money, okay? So focus on building monthly SAP book, which is at least 1%, so which will add you at least 12% of the uh, AUM for the year. Next is every client should have at least one SAP. If you don't have a client with SAP, try to sell at least one minimum SAP. Educate client on the importance of disciplined investment. Then they will not stop. So I have educated my client, they will call and invest when the market is down. They will not panic and sell. Why? Because I have been spending a lot of time on educating them. So what mistakes we do is we don't educate our clients. We just tell equity will get 15% return. After two years, if he doesn't make any return, he is going to get out of the mutual fund industry for his life, right? But if you had educated and sold right products, he will be with you for a longer period. So this is an easy way to grow. Have 1% if you have, my SAP book is 1.2% of my AUM. So this year I'm going to grow 18% comfortably without any effort, right? Third is lump sum from existing clients. So many times what happens, we put lot of effort to acquire new clients. But our existing clients, we don't even care to speak to them. So we should have a mechanism where you spend, you call them and speak to them even if you don't have any business transaction requirements. Like, you know, 10 days back I called one of the clients in Chennai, he just sold a real estate property and he has got 60 lakhs to invest. So tomorrow I am meeting with him. If I had not made this call, this money would have gone to some other place. So. Just introspect, assume you have put in your money, it might be 10,000, 1 lakh, 10 lakh, to a, through a distributor or other distributor, and he never calls you for six months. Then will you do business with him? Your hard-earned money, it can be 10,000 rupees, 1 lakh, 1 crore, it doesn't matter. You have identified a distributor and invested through him, right? And tomorrow, if he, if he doesn't show you for one year, will you keep that money with him? 
If simple logic for one year, if you with the client you have not spoken and he is calling, he, he has given you a call, he is, it's for redemption. As simple as that. So always make sure that 1% of your AUM every month you try to take it from your existing client. Right? That should be your basic concept. Next is identify. Yeah. So this is the last slide which I want to tell. Assume you are holding a 10 crore uh, AUM. Okay? Your SAP book is 8 lakh which is going to give you 0.8 percent. Mark to market will give you around 8 lakh which is 0.8 percent. If you get 10 lakh every month from existing clients, assume 200 clients you have, getting 10 lakh rupees is just very easy. 1 percent and new flows from the new client can be 1 percent. How do you get new clients? You already have a 200 clients, ask for references, 5 to 6 clients every month adding is not a big deal. So 3 to 3 and a percent if you are growing, this is the effort cycle, mark to market, SAP book, lump sum, new client acquisition. So this is the metrics which I want to show. If you are growing every month by 1%, you will grow 3.3x in 10 years. Okay? If you are growing at 3%, you can grow 34x in 10 years. Okay? Now our industry is growing at 1.2%, which will be around 33. So thanks. Hope it was useful.